These days, rich, detailed media content comes straight to your desktop quickly and easily. But that's not the only information there is. Sometimes you have to dig a little deeper. So I went travelling. I hopped on a train, crossed the River Thames and went to the National Archives at Kew Gardens. That's the, the building through the trees there where I spent the day consulting various documents dealing with the British Council's film production and distribution history, all the way back to the 30s and the 40s. And it was a really fascinating day. It gave me a lot of insights into how the British Council has thought about film over the years. But over and above that, it, it really made me realise how technically a difficult thing it was to get these films out and get them seen. There are a lot of references in the archives to, to basic technical issues, to, to scratched and faulty negatives, um, to films breaking in the projector while they're being projected, to problems with sound and soundtracks. Even uh, one unfortunate had a projectionist who kept on fainting while he was showing a uh, medical film, presumably very graphic, about cardiac arrests. So kind of basic technical issues. Over and above that, there were cultural issues, a lot of problems with language, with making sure that local audiences understood what they were seeing. So a lot of the comments that came back said, well, the commentary is too fast, or the soundtrack is too loud and it drowns the commentary out so people can't really understand it, or the film is cut too quickly so people for whom English isn't the first language are struggling to keep up with the commentary and they, they lose attention on the film, everything's cut too quickly and they don't see what's going past. And there were cultural issues as well. Um, a British Council person in Afghanistan talked about uh, showing a film in which a central metaphor was, was playing cards. The problem was none of his audience understood what playing cards were. They, they, they'd never played cards in their lives. So he ended up trying to teach them Snap, uh, which they thought apparently was a very silly game indeed. I think that was the quote. Um, so he felt the whole thing was a bit of a waste of time. Uh, there were problems in West Africa as well. One of the uh, more successful British Council scientific films was called The Life Cycle of the Newt. Uh, the problem being that there aren't any newts in West Africa, and so this would get shown to audiences who would be completely baffled by the whole thing. But these comments, it seems like I'm being a bit negative, I've just kind of picked out some of the critical comments. They were very much pitched as constructive criticisms, and over and above them there was very much a sense that these films in general communicated a clearly defined a British idea of Britishness very effectively indeed to a very wide, genuinely international audience. And there's something really interesting in that. Going back to the point at the beginning about how easy it is for us to get information, how easy it is for us to find things out, and we kind of assume we live in an information-rich age because of the internet. But looking at the way these films were really exciting to and really enjoyed by audiences, there's actually a deep human social need to kind of understand with each other and engage with each other, not on a political level, uh, but just culturally, to see what other people do and how other people lead, live. And it seems that these films very much kind of satisfied that need in people and were, were, were a very important means of doing it. So for me it's, it's a real tribute to those British Council people back in the 40s that they kind of battered through all these difficulties, they sent all these you know, tremendously positive, tremendously useful reports back home and managed to do what I guess the British Council has always done, which is to spread the idea of Britishness in a positive cultural way to the world.